All right, let's start. So, hi, I'm Tanya Jenka. I'm also known as She Hacks Purple, and I want to talk about maturing our AppSec programs. So, I work with companies all the time. I work with customers a lot. I love my customers, and I see all different levels. But when I work with someone, that means they take security seriously enough to engage me or to engage SEMGRIP or to engage IAN's research. There's tons of companies that haven't engaged anyone. Like they don't have one of you to rely on and they are like out there. And so I wanna talk about diff three different models of AppSec that I see a lot and then how we could take them to the next level. So if you are one of those models, that's cool. I can help you do better. And so where are we gonna talk about? We're gonna talk about common AppSec models, why they fail and how we can just provide more value to our employers. Because to be quite frank, we all want software to be more secure. That's what we want. And so I wanna briefly tell you how I did my research because um, someone pointed out to me, they're like, you can't just say, cause Tanya said so. You actually have to explain like how you learned these things. Uh, we can't just take your word for it. And I was like, you know, that's a really good point. So I've been working with this company called IANS Research since I guess I started very, very late 2018. So let's call it 2019. And then I've worked with almost 400 different AppSec teams over that time. Um, you know how like there used to be that game show online where you could phone a friend? So IANS lets you phone a nerd. I'm one of the nerds. And then I just help crush your AppSec programs. And I do between one and seven calls a week. And then after so many years and taking so many notes, because I'm one of those obsessive note taker persons, because I can't remember anything. I just realized like, wow, I have a lot of data. And when you have 400 companies that you've spread the data across, it's no longer like it's a data set. It's no longer you're talking about this company. It's a data set. And I was like, I need to start sharing this data in anonymized ways. And so this is one of the talks where I'm sharing that data after so many years. And so thank you to IONS Research for actually giving me money because it's pretty cool to get paid to just do really awesome work. So I'm this person, when I brush my hair, I look pretty good. Um, I work at SEMGRAP and I'm the head of community there and they're very gracious and let me do lots of silly things like make cards against AppSec. Um, I'm known as SheX Purple. I wrote a book called Alice and Bob Learn Application Security. I've So this is year 28 in tech for me, I'm old. Um, I founded some stuff, I advise some people and I do some research. And so hopefully you're like, she seems qualified enough. I guess I'm not gonna leave, I'll sit down. It's hot, don't leave. Um, so I wanna talk about maturity. So um, how do I say, so this is like, so it says like, Tanya gently explain that, so we as an industry, some of us are doing great and that is not very many of us. A lot of us are AppSec programs where like, I wish it was so much better. We don't feel super, like we're not bragging to our friends. <laughs> we're not, like we're just not as satisfied with how it's going. And we know this because we keep seeing giant breaches, right? We keep seeing software development not going as securely and reliably as we expect it to. Like the whole thing with CrowdStrike was just us not following proper software development practices, testing the way we know we know we should. And they know too, because there's so many pressures. And so um, this talks about how we can mature because the whole industry is not where the people in this room are. The people in this room, you came probably from another country or from another part in this country to this place to learn, to become better. Everyone else isn't doing that right? Only some of us are. So there's a bit of the cream of the crop going on here. So if you're like, of course we would do that. Yeah, you would, but not everyone's doing it. So I want us to all kind of continue on that. So one of the issues I see with, so there are some models. So there's OWASP, SAM, BSIM, and NIST. I actually haven't used BSIM because it costs money and I'm very cheap. You'd be surprised. Um, but I've done a lot of SAM and a lot of NIST. And these, when I talk with customers, they're like, oh, let's do a maturity model. And I'm like, great. And then I start telling them about it and they're so overwhelmed. I went to a SAM, an OWASP SAM user meetup. So SAM's awesome, just to be clear. And it's not a person, it's the software assurance maturity model. And they were telling me that on average, their user group, so the people that are obsessed with SAM, they rate at like 1.1 out of three. So these are the people that have been doing SAM for years, working their butts off and they're barely getting one out of three. So when I ask a client who's like, 
what does AFSEC stand for? To look at Sam, their eyes glaze over, they start to cry. They're just like, I, I can't even, I can't even fathom where to start. So I'm gonna start below that, okay? Because that's where we are. So onto the models. I just like cats and this is the OSI model, but with cats. Anyway, <laughs> okay, so model one, let's just pen test the important things. Who has worked with a client at some point where that's all they do? So like once or twice a year, they have a pen tester come in, they do a pen test, they fail it so bad. Uh, and um, and then they're like, yeah, that's our AppSec program. And I'm like, whoa, that's expensive for what you're getting. Like pen testing's awesome. But if that's the only thing you're doing and you're just pen testing like two of your 200 apps once a year, you're getting a blink of a tiny, tiny portion of your entire attack surface. And like, this is not gonna go well. And so unfortunately, even in 2024, lots of companies are starting their first AppSec program. Like last year I worked with a gaming company and you own their games and I helped them start their first AppSec program. And so this, this year I trained a company that handles $2 billion of uh, their customers' money and they were letting Every single person at the company query the production database using the same user. And then they take client scripts and they just run it without any checking against the database that handles $2 billion. And I was like, oh, okay. We redesigned it. Life is way better now. Like everything's going better, but like $2 billion and that's what they were doing, right? So at least these people are doing two pen tests a year because they were doing literally nothing before I got there in March. So. Yeah, so um, let's talk about this model. So it is extremely common. Generally, there's no formal system development life cycle. They're like, we're doing water gile. <laughs> we're doing DevOps gile. We're doing, you know, we have a scrum meeting, but it's only once a week. And then like we do sprints, but they're six months long. <laughs> Every single team is doing something different. Um, there's a mixed tech stack. So we have like five different programming languages and 12 different versions of six different frameworks. And then like some of us are using PaaS, some of us are using IAC, like everyone just like, Ooh, let's do our own thing, it's great. It's not, um, we have code all over the place. So I'm like, oh, where do you keep your code? They're like, so about that. And it's in like five different types of repositories, but there's actually like 22 instances. So you don't even know where your code is. Um, yeah, everyone's just kind of doing their own thing and that's not good. So why is this model bad? <laughs> I think you already know, but let me tell you. Um, so it's quite expensive for what you're getting. So pen testers are not cheap, like good ones are not cheap and they shouldn't be. Um, but usually I like to do pen testing as like this beautiful cherry on top to make something perfect, not as my only effort whatsoever. And so you're having terrible, terrible coverage. Developers are getting zero support. Um, like there's no opportunity for anyone to learn. That's one of the biggest problems with this one. None of your staff's getting better because you have this awesome, brilliant pen tester coming in doing cool work and then all their super awesome brain and knowledge leave, <laughs> right? And so that is one of the many reasons this is bad. And so how can we mature this model? So I have, so this one, I have the, if you have budget and if you don't have budget, a lot of my career, my budget has not been quite what I want. I totally have an awesome budget now running a community. It's like 8,000 bucks. Anyway, <laughs> um, how do we mature this model? So first I like to start with secure coding training and I'm gonna give you a link to free training for secure coding after this. There's gonna be a bunch of free resources because I want all of you to be awesome. Um, but the way I teach secure coding training is not the same way as someone else does. And so although obviously I'm the best ever, what you want is training that works for your team, that your team likes. And so as much as like a salesperson will tell you ours is the best ever, what only really matters is that your team likes it and that your team's willing to sit through it or go on the platform and play or attend the monthly lunch and learns. Whatever it is that you decide, try it out on some devs first and make sure that they're willing to tolerate it. Don't pay $12,000 to have someone come in that they hate, right? Or a system or whatever it is that you do, try to make sure it's a thing that they'll tolerate. Um, so the no budget plan. So for those of us that don't have giant budgets, you don't have to raise your hands because it's sad. Um, okay, so one, 
So use free tools like Zap and Burp if you're going to do dynamic scanning and then for static analysis. So for, for dynamic analysis, there's basically like two super clear, awesome winners. And then for static analysis, like there's tons, like I could fill this whole page. So like there's many, many, many open source SaaS that are free. They're like, not bad, not bad. Um, and then create a guideline. And I have one online again, that's free. But basically, create some sort of guidance for your devs about how to create code that you feel is acceptable. And it's totally okay to steal something off of my website, off the OWASP website, off of like websites that give you permission to do that so you don't have to reinvent the wheel, but give them some guidance. Um, next, create, create a list of requirements. So when you start a project, you set clear expectations for security for everyone on that project. And this could be just like five things. Like you're gonna scan it with our little SAS, you're gonna scan it with our little desk, you're gonna fix the mediums and above, and then we're gonna do a pen test at the end. That could just be your entire requirements, right? And follow the guideline. Like it doesn't have to be really advanced and you can add to it over time, but starting a project with super clear expectations will get you a lot more of what you want in this world. Um, consolidate your code. So this is a really hard one. This is one of those things where you're going to have to talk to lots of people. But if your code is all in the same place, your life's going to be better. Um, the devs will also probably enjoy that once it happens. Like while we're doing it, it's going to suck. But once it's all in the same place, like everyone's going to benefit, not just you. And then lastly, Oh, actually, no, I have a whole nother page. Push for real system development lifecycle, push for centralization, push for standardization. This is a really hard one that requires a lot of social currency, but it is worth every single hour that you spend talking to people to make that happen. Like every single person in your whole IT department will benefit from that. Okay, number six, threat model the super important apps. So those ones that you used to just pen test and that's all you did, do a threat model. You can do a super basic threat model. Um, there's this amazing human named Adam Showstack. He has this thing called the four question frame for threat modeling. It's just four questions and a conversation. I start with that. It's so good. He's so smart. Um, you don't have to read all of his awesome books, but you totally could. And like, just start with that and you will get really far. Share information about incidents. So if you've had an app incident, if you're allowed, if it makes sense, share with the devs. Quite often when I start talking to them about security incidents, they had no idea. They had no idea we've been attacked. They had no idea we're attacked four billion times a day. They have no idea this stuff's happening and I'm not doing it to scare their pants off. I want them to understand the threats we face. So I'm not trying to fear uncertainty and doubt. I'm like, this is specifically what is happening to us and why I need your help so bad. Um, scan for secrets. There are free secret scanners. There's paid free secret scanners. Basically, if you have more time, you should use a free one. If you have more money, you should use a paid one. But basically, scan your code for secrets and then rotate those secrets. Use a secret management tool, but that's later for when you have money. Um, there's a free WAF from OWASP called Mod Security. And you can put that in front of your super scary, terrible, like last updated in 2008 apps. Do that. Um, and then you still pen test the important apps. However, now you don't fail horribly and it's no longer completely embarrassing where you're like, oh God, I can't look the pen tester in the face. This is so bad. <laughs> um, so that's nice. And then, so now if you have budget, I want to add three more things. So if you have budget, see how she kind of looks like a badass. She's like, I have budget. <laughs> Hire an AppSec person. Like that is the best investment you can ever make. Like hire someone from this room. <laughs> um, like seriously, the people that are in this room, probably almost all of them would be amazing to work with. Um, pay for a next gen SaaS. So I find that the paid SaaS are a lot better than the paid DAS. I kind of think DAS sucks. And I remember people telling me at the beginning of my AppSec career that DAS sucks. I'm like, DAS is amazing. And they're like, one day when you're a more mature AppSec professional, Tanya, you'll understand. And one day I, I just did. <laughs> I'm sorry if you make a DAS, I'm a jerk. Um, Continue with your free-ish dast. I, I just would never buy one. Um, and then all of step two. So still do the no budget plan. So this is model one. And now we're gonna do model two. All right, model tool. I, have the, I call this tools, tools, and more tools. Um, so this is the most common thing. I see this absolutely all the time. Actually, let me go back for a second. 
So this is SAS plus DAS, perhaps one other tool, a little bit of governance. Okay, so partially rolled out tools. This is the most common thing. So partially rolled out. So we've paid $75,000 for a DAST and like $60,000 for a SAS, and we are totally using 20% of our licenses, which I hate. I work for a vendor, take every penny you can, you paid for it. <laughs> lots of bug reports, but ain't no one fixing anything. So we've got lots of reports, they're not getting to the right people. Maybe there's lots of false positives. Maybe we're just not distributing them well. Maybe we're just not scanning the right things. Maybe we're scanning so rarely that it's unhelpful, but things are just not getting fixed. Um, inconsistent program. So I see this a lot. I see huge inconsistencies. Like one team has to do this huge architecture review. And I worked at this one place and they had an 80 page template. So it was like 160 pages when you filled it out. And guess how many people filled it out? Zero. You can't see I'm doing this. Yeah. Um, no, that doesn't work. And usually they always have a SAST and a DAST. Um, little to no documentation. And the most common thing anyone ever says is, why won't the devs fix the bugs? I'm never going to talk to them or interact with them or provide support. I'm not going to even ask them this question. I'm going to ask everyone else in the entire company this question. This is a thing that I hear all the time. I'm like, did you ask the devs why they're not fixing it? No. When's the last time you talked to them? Never. I see the beginning of your problem. So why is this model bad? I really like dragons and I just wanted to have dragons in my presentation. Um, okay, so the coverage is bad. It's not terrible. It's not like the last one, but the coverage is bad. Not much is fixed. We're, so we as an industry are not here to find books. We are here to reduce organizational risk in a meaningful and lasting way. That's our job. It does not matter if you find 45,000 bugs, you've found every bug that exists. If no one's fixing anything, in my opinion, your paycheck is too big. What we wanna do is fix the things. We wanna prevent the things from happening in the first place. We wanna protect our orgs and you're just not doing it as well as you could with this program. And so how do we mature it? <laughs> I used an AI to make this. I was like, show me a little girl growing up and becoming more mature. And this is what the AI gave me. I'm like, I'll take it. Sounds good. Okay, so we wanna do everything from the previous maturity model. I was like, show me a little girl maturing and this is, I guess this is how little girls mature now. <laughs> okay, so then the number one thing I would do is hire more AppSec folks. And I realize I am an AppSec folks, so I am biased, but I kind of think we're awesome. <laughs> but really though, AppSec folks, Okay, so one of the pieces of advice is your entire AppSec team cannot just be pen testers. You have to have one of those people at least because we need them. <laughs> but you can't have a team where you have five AppSec folks and every single one of them's just got the pen testing skills and like they don't, none of them have ever been a dev, none of them know how to read code, or maybe they do know how to read code, but like they just know how to do pen testing. They don't know how to do code review. They don't know how to do a threat model. They don't know how to write a policy. So you need a well-rounded AppSec team with a whole bunch of different types of skill sets. That's very important. One of them needs to have that pen tester, I'm gonna F up your shit type of thing, but the, like, the rest of them, like you have to have a rainbow type of team. This is one of those times when diversity can, like diversity of experience and um, like skill set will really, really get, bring you a lot of value. Um, reassess your tools. So if it's been two or three years and you still haven't rolled your SAS, DAST, AST, whatever acronym thing out, it's the wrong tool. Done. You're done with it. Switch tools. Um, I find that I'll work with companies and they're like, well, we've had it five years. And I'm like, yeah, and you're using 30% of your licenses. So for five years, you've been paying for 70% of things you're not using. You've wasted this many dollars. It's not working for you. It's like the sunk cost fallacy applies. Just get rid of it, start again. Find a tool and make sure you evaluate it with your devs and make sure the rollout is fast. Don't buy a tool if it's going to take you two years to roll it out. I wanted to buy this I asked once. I was like so in love with it. I really, really wanted to buy it. And after three months, we still had not finished the proof of concept because I just couldn't get the team to roll it out. And my boss was like, you're going to roll this out for the rest of your career if we buy it. So it needs to be something that rolls out fast. Ensure your rollout's complete. Make the vendor give you every penny of value you paid for. Put us through our paces. 
I know that that may sound like strange advice from a person that like works at one of those places, but you should get every single bit of value you can for that thing you're paying for. And the thing you can do is if at six months, you still are not able to roll out all the licenses, you can say like, well, you know what? It's been six months and we haven't been able to roll them out. Like maybe I don't wanna pay for the rest of the six months for those licenses we're not using. Some companies I've been able to do is I'll say like, I wanna buy half in the first six months and the other half in the next six months because I know it's gonna take a long time. But ideally just get something that's easy to roll out if that is a possibility for you and the way that your stack looks, because it's not always possible. The hardest advice ever, provide support, make friends, talk to people, build trust. This is hard. So this can mean writing a one pager with security guidance, uh, helping them with their frameworks, being available is really, really hard because I know all of you are probably really, really busy, but this is something that creates a ton of value and you don't have to dye your hair purple. It just helps. All of you actually look really good in purple. Some of you just don't know it yet. Um, start to manage incidents better. Send your team on instant response training if you can. Figure out a way for, actually, let me do this. Create a way to report incidents really quickly. Do incident training for devs so they know what it looks like and they can tell you when they see something bad. And then create an incident response process. Make sure everyone knows it that needs to know it. A lot of these companies, they don't got nothing. They're really good at responding to malware. They're ready for ransomware. Everything else, they have no plan whatsoever. Model three. And we have how many minutes left? We have five minutes. Okay, I call this the stranglehold big spend. Um, so you have every single tool. You have like 11 tools. Um, you've spent all the money. Uh, there, you have a stranglehold governance. No one can breathe. It takes three weeks to make a one line change of code. Um, there's constant friction. The security posture is not satisfying for how much you're spending. And sec and dev don't talk unless they're yelling. I have worked here so many times. And it, you come in and I remember my friend, Nicole, she's like, I walk in and I'm like, hey, I'm Nicole. I'm from security. I come in peace. And then I put my hands out like this and hopefully people laugh. Sometimes they boo. And then I know what level I'm at to start and how much peacemaking I need to do. But the I come in peace really works well. So why is this model bad? You're spending a zillion dollars and you are not getting your money's worth you are slowing down innovation. Maybe even people are quitting because they just can't stand how annoying, how much friction there is. You, the security team, are petting the cat, which is a dev, backwards all day long. And the devs are just like, ah. Oh. I used to work somewhere where I literally, I saw the security guy and then I went like this. And my boss was like, did you literally just duck? And I was like, I'm so busted. Don't, we don't want to be that. None of us want to be that. We're that way because so many other cultural things have happened. That's what led us to that. So I suggest scaling with either a security champions program, delegation, like specific delegation, um, automation. So I have like a bunch of things that I can talk about how to scale your, your program better. But if you do a champs program, do it's a big undertaking be serious about it be intentional do a really good job i would love to talk to you about that after i'm a big giant fan i'm a bit obsessive if you're not going to do a champions program do an advocacy program to change the culture where you work so it's more positive make it a standard take all your guidance and guidelines turn them into standards because you're ready for that now and then provide training and workshops on how to apply that and help everyone become compliant you will make friends not enemies that way instead of just publishing a policy and then being like good luck with that um, make your tools go fast you want fast tools you are paying a fortune you deserve fast efficient tools full of true positives if you're not getting it break up um, examine your APIs. So at this point, you should be taking care of your APIs, not just your front end web apps. You should be taking care of every type of software, including mobile, including IoT, including web sockets. All of those things need attention now. And you might need to get a special subset of your tools to make sure you pay them the special attention they deserve. Embrace threat modeling, threat modeling rules. Um, you want a company-wide secret management at this point. I do not sell a secret management tool. I wish I did because they are amazing and you need one. <laughs> Your whole company should have a management program, like a, an app, but also just like a plan to manage your secrets as a whole so that you never ever leak a secret again. 
you want to do continuous scanning, and I don't mean this in like a swear word marketing buzzword type of way. I mean like set up your tools so they're always scanning all the time and you're reviewing them when you see something disconcerting. You can do this with more modern tools where they're just kind of scanning on their own and then you review it when you have time. Training that doesn't suck. Evaluate the training with your devs to see if they actually like it. Do the one they like. Do the one that they're willing to tolerate. This might mean it's like one day a week for three weeks. It might mean it's a one hour every other week. It might mean it's a full day for three days in a row and it's interactive and they get to like move around. There's many different types of trainings. Don't just go with the cheap one. Don't just go with the popular one. Go with the one they like the best because you will get the best results. Um, if you have a WAF on stuff, if you have the money to a RASP, it's just better. <laughs> I know a lot of people are going to swear at me about that after. Um, your AppSec team should be trained in incident response or your incident response team should have some training in AppSec so that if a real AppSec incident, like a big one happens, you are ready. This is more advanced and that's okay. And lastly, use a data-driven approach. He has, see that giant smile he has? It's gorgeous, it's wonderful because he's using data to improve his program. I talk about this a lot too. You should be gathering metrics on the regular and then using that to do experiments and then improving, improving, improving. Whatever's not working, you throw it out. Whatever is working, you do more of that. I know that sounds obvious, but taking that time every 90 days to look at your metrics and improve will bring you huge value over time. And I totally have one minute left. So conclusion, we learned three common AppSec models, how to identify the models, how to improve the models and build a better program. But more importantly, if you want to get your phones out, I have some resources. So I have free secure coding courses, AppSec courses. Um, I, next week, I'm releasing Instant Response for Devs. All of it's free. There is no payment except we add you to our newsletter, but me and my colleague Amanda write it and I think it doesn't suck very much. And you can just unsubscribe if you don't like it, but I didn't say that. Okay, next, um, books. I love books. These books are not free. I only wrote one of them and my mom says that one's the best one, but I love DevOps and I feel like us security folks can learn a lot from the amazing DevOps folks, especially the researchers. This is really good content. Um, Cyber Mentoring Monday, every single Monday on Twitter and on Mastodon InfoSec Exchange, I use this hashtag to match with people. I have so many people write me and they want an AppSec mentor. And the people in this room, if you would answer one of them, you will make their whole year. Seriously, you've changed someone's entire life when you answer their call. And if I can just ask one favor from you is to answer someone and have a virtual coffee with them, recommend a book, recommend a talk, just giving them your time and encouragement can literally change their entire career tra trajectory. And then lastly, me, I am a nerd on the internet. I do this all the time. It's basically all I do. I love giving stuff away for free. I'm not as good at business, but I'm really good at sharing. Um, I am she hacks purple on all the things. And, um, and then lastly, thank you. Thank you so much for coming. There's so much cool stuff and you came to see this. Thank you.